Do you know how to design steel compression members? In this tutorial, I will teach you step-by-step -step process to design steel column as per Eurocode 3. This is part 10 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In this tutorial, I will cover two examples. One example is simply supported column where a section is given to us and we have to find out the resistance of the section. And second example is column in a multi-story building. In this example, the section is not given to us. Structural layout is given to us. Flow loading is given. And then we have to make design decisions in the second example. Let us solve the first example. This example, steel grade is 235 again, practically in the UK. Normally for columns, we use S355. This is just for demonstration. LCR and LCRZ, these are buckling lengths. The axial compressive load NED is given 550 kN. The first thing first is that you have to locate these properties. Now you know how to find out these properties, don't you? Yeah, play that. Section yeah. table. So simply go to section table 4571918989. This is the section. So all of these properties they come from here. So you can see depth of the section, root radius. Note one thing that we have CW over TW, CF over TF is given. But for our exercises uh, or our designs, you will work out. But when you are working in design office, you will simply use it from here. But it's useful that you will compare your results with this. These values are obtained from a section table. I want you to notice two things here. One is area here is in centimeter square. So always convert it into millimeter square. And IZ is in centimeter. So always convert it into millimeter. And then again, second moment of area is in centimeter power four. So always convert this into to millimeter power four. So convert everything into millimeters. LCR is equal to LCR, Y, and Z, but we will consider the weaker axis, which is the minor axis. And in our case, it is ZZ axis. First thing first is that we have to classify the sections. Then we have to determine if the buckling check is required or not. But here we are checking cross-section resistance in any way. And then we check the buckling resistance. How do we classify the section? First, we determine epsilon. It happens to be that we are using S275, so that's why this is coming out to be one. We use these properties from section table. We work out CF, or for practical purposes, you can work out CF over TF directly from the section table. So if you will compare it for this section, in fact, go away and compare it with section table, you will, you will have the same value. The limit for first class is nine, nine times one. This is certainly less than nine times one. So flanges are class one. Again, for web, the limit is less than 42 epsilon. So web is class three. As I said to you that most of the sections are class one or two in the section table, but here we are using a UKB, a beam section as a column which is not a common thing in industry. We normally use UKC as columns where breadth and height are the same. Flanges are class one, web is class three. So we have to choose the highest class. So highest class is class three. Section is classified as class three. After that, I have to work out the compressive resistance. Compressive resistance is similar to what we did in tensile resistance. Simply multiply area, but don't forget to convert it into millimeter square and then multiply it with Fy and then multiply everything with 10 raised minus 3 to convert it into kilonewtons. If you put these values over here, then you're getting this NED over NCRD as 0.2. This means that the section is okay in terms of compressive resistance. The next thing is to work out buckling resistance, but before that, we have to see that if buckling resistance is required or not. And then the key thing to remember here is that this is a direct formula for lambda dash Z minor axis. LCR is the buckling length, which we are using one times L, six meter, converting it into millimeters, it comes out to be 6,000. IZ is radius of gyration in Z direction or minor axis direction. Note that it is given in centimeter in section table, but you have to convert it into millimeters, otherwise you'll get a wrong answer. 42.9 and again, one over 93.9 comes from the formula. Epsilon, we 
worked out a little earlier epsilon is the same as you did it in tension structures it's the same thing or the one that you use in section classification it's the same thing lambda dash z which is slenderness is 1.49 which is greater than 0.2 it, it means that buckling resistance needs to be checked out for this column and for working out reduction factor we need this fee for fee we need alpha alpha depends on h over b now where do we get this h over b we get this h over b from section table and when you use h over b this comes out to be 2.42 i have to use this table 6.2 h over b is 2.42 so 2.42 is greater than 1.2 it means that i will use this information thickness of flange is less than 40 means this information buckling is happening in minor axis which is zz my steel grade is s235 this information so my curve is going to be b so when i determine curve i will go back to stable 6.1 for b i have value of alpha 0.34 this is how we determine alpha and I put this into a formula for phi where lambda dash I figured out 1.49 alpha I've just determined when you put these values you will get this alpha z it means that it, it is in minor axis direction now once you have got this value if you put it back into formula for reduction factor you will get a reduction factor of 0.34 now what you simply do after that is that you multiply it with the cross-sectional resistance or you multiply it with a f y you can see here this reduction factor times AFY over gamma M1 is 1. We are converting this area into millimeter square. We have to multiply it with 10 raised minus 3 though to convert it into kilonewtons. Applied versus buckling resistance, it comes out to be 0.59. So the section for the column is okay. But isn't this section too big? In second example, you have to make design decisions. Structural layout or functional framing of a multi-story building is given and we have to find out a suitable section and we have to find out a critical column as well. Let us solve second example. In this example, a six-story building is located in Leeds city centre. The building is braced and all joints are pinned. The floor is a composite floor. The decking is 1.2, it has got self weight of 0.14 and the concrete weight is 2.5. The imposed flow load is 5 kN per meter square and partitions is 0.8. We have to identify the critical member in this example and after the completion of the design the, the client wishes to have a 10 by 10 grid instead of 9 by 6 and we have to evaluate two design options and decide a practical solution the first step is to work out design load and come up with a trial section first we have to work out characteristic flow loads flow loads consist of a gk which is permanent load self weight plus services self weight consists of 0.15 plus 2.5 plus 0.2 that is equal to 2.8 kN per meter square. Then QK, which is imposed load, plus partitions, which is equal to 5 plus 0 0.8. It comes out to be 5.8 kN per meter square. The internal column is supporting loading from two primary beams and two secondary beams. Now, there are two ways to work out loading on this internal column. One is to work out reactions from secondary beams and primary beams for each flow and then add them together other is to work out tributary area which is nine by six meter and multiply it with the flow load the internal column c is the most critical one it takes the most of the load the tributary area of column c is nine by six which comes out to be 54 meter square there is a mistake in this text but other calculations are absolutely fine here we are assuming that the roof load is not taken by central column C. It is taken by perimeter columns. Total flow load on ground flow column comes out to be GK, which is permanent load. We will multiply number of floors with flow load in kilonewton per meter square with tributary area that the column is supporting. In that way, we will work out permanent load and variable load. 
design load NED is equal to key gamma G GK plus gamma Q QK. This is equation 6.10 B. Key factor is 0.925 times 1.35 times GK is permanent load, which is 766.8 kN plus 1.5 times variable load QK, which is 1566 kN. This gives us value of 3306.5 kilonewtons. Once we have got design load, then we will work out the trial section. And for this, we will use a rule of thumb. Assuming S355 steel grade, area of a steel section will be equal to NED divided by 0.65 FY. If you put all these values, we get area of the section. This is the required area. Then we will go to section table to find a suitable section. Remember area in section table is in centimeter square. So we will convert this area into centimeter square. About this typo once again, the required area should be in centimeter square. In section table, we will choose a section with area more than 155 centimeter square. In this case, it is 168 centimeter square. The section is 254 by 254 into 132 UKC with steel grade of S355. The provided area is 168 centimeter square, which is greater than required area 155 centimeter square. As per Eurocode 3 design procedure for compression members, the first step is to classify the sections. Now we have the section, we will classify the section. Let us classify the flanges first. CF is equal to B minus TW minus 2R divided by 2. We will get these values from section table. These are the values for B, TW and R. We will put all these values in CF and we will work out CF over TF which comes out to be 4.36 and we will compare this value with the limiting values. The limiting value for class 1 flanges is 9 epsilon where epsilon is under root 235 over Fy. We get Fy from table 3.1. In that way 9 epsilon comes out to be 7.29. So CF over TF is less than 9 epsilon which means flanges are class 1. Now we will classify web or internal compression part. CW is H minus 2 TF minus 2 R. CW is also equal to D where D is depth between the fillets, which can directly be obtained from section table. When you place all these values, you obtain CW as 200.3. And then we work out CW over TW, which comes out to be 13.1. And then we compare it with the limiting value, which is 33 epsilon for class 1 internal compression parts. CW over TW 13.1 is less than 26.1. The 7, so web is class 1. Overall classification is class 1. Now once the section is classified as class 1, then we will use appropriate formula for compression resistance. Step 2 is to determine if buckling check is required or not. And we do this by finding out lambda dash z. If it is less than or equal to 0.2, then no buckling resistance check is required. If it is more than 0.2, then buckling resistance check is required. Step 2 is to determine lambda dash z. Lambda dash z is equal to LCR over IZ, where IZ is radius of gyration into 1 over lambda 1, where lambda 1 is equal to 93.9 epsilon. We get value of IZ from section table as 6.69 in minor axis. When we input all these values, then we get value of lambda dash z as 0 0.786 which is not less than 0 0.2 this means that buckling check is required for buckling check we will use these two equations we'll use this equation nbrd is equal to key afy over gamma m1 where key is a reduction factor which is found by equation 6.49 T is equal to 1 over phi under root phi squared minus lambda squared, where phi is equal to 0.5, 1 plus alpha lambda z minus 0.2 plus lambda z squared. 
alpha can be found out from table 6.2 and 6.1 for h over b 1.06 we will go to table 6.2 h over b is less than 1.2 thickness of flange 25.3 is less than 100 millimeter buckling is happening about zz axis steel grade is s2 s355 the buckling curve is curve c once we have got curve c then we will go back to table 6.1 corresponding to curve c value of alpha is 0 0.49 once we have got value of alpha we will put it back into equation for phi and we will work out phi we put value of alpha and lambda in equation for phi we get 0.952 and we put it back into equation of key and we get 0.671 nbrd is key fy over gamma m1 0.67 168 times 355 we get 4000 kilonewton then we work out ned over nbrd which comes out to be 0.83 which is less than one this means that section provided is uh, all right normally we use demand versus capacity between 0.85 to 0.9 you might be wondering how do i remember all these difficult formula for this there is a quick solution if you click on this bit ly slash steel design it will take you to a quick recipe for design of compression members it's a dropbox folder no sign in is required if you click on that you will be able to see this two page recipe a design recipe where you have all the formula which are given which i have used in this lecture starting from compression resistance to buckling resistance all the way to slenderness formula and imperfection buckling length and all the design steps.